once the desire arises we become a slave to them it's just that we say oh these are my desires how are these your desires when you never desired them do we desire our desires no they just come and where do they come from they come from influences they come from conditioning and they arise from the bodily configuration and once they arise we act as if we own them we say oh this is my desire and then we run after those desires and thousand others are running after the same desires and if we succeed in the competition we say we are special no we are not can you question desire itself and when you question desire itself then you learn the right desire and that's where joy is that's where the highest pleasure is my question is uh, does spirituality have the tendency to make someone a very cold sort of a person because you spoke spoke of misinterpretation and before the break uh, you had given an example of the puppy that you're holding in your arms and you spoke of compassion so i feel somehow if that impulsiveness is taken out of you uh, and the compassion just doesn't flow when you're very attentive and you're observing to everything there is also a tendency of you you know your reactions coming out after a pause and uh, that takes away i think the very nature of you like you are not impulsively going when the whole world is burning when our very existence is feverish hmm? isn't a cold ice cream a delight yes how do you know that coldness is a problem everything has to be put in context right we are all very inflamed people are we not we are all aroused inflamed excited feverish that's the condition we all are in that's the condition of the world look at climate change it's an inflammation coldness is great when you have average temperatures hovering 2 degrees above normal what's the problem with coldness please try to get the metaphor how do you know coldness is a problem it's just that we are habituated to a certain inflammatory state within we do not know its substitute but because we are habituated to it so we get terrified by any alternatives we have not seen anything else hmm? cold love might be far more compelling than the warm kind of normal bubbly juvenile thing that we usually encounter no how do you know that if you are someone who understands prakriti and the body and the primitive tendencies your affection towards the puppy would be degraded how do you know we were talking of the buddha being so compassionate towards a goat the buddha obviously knows the goat and his own body and all corporal stuff and still there is so much compassion why do you think that the kind of ignorant attachment and impulsive attraction that we usually witness in relationships is the best thing possible ever stories movies pop culture huh this is it have we ever tasted its alternative if we have not how are we so decisive how are we so decisive you can very well imagine the puppy in your arms huh and you don't even know why you like the puppy and everyone likes puppies kitten puppy we all are drawn and we do not know why how do you know that if you know why we are drawn towards kittens and puppies and kids hmm and young girls and young boys and all stuff then the quality of relationship would be inferior how do you how have you deduced that the relationship would be inferior not deeper from where did that come please you mean to say that 
relationship is possible only in ignorance? Is that the assertion? Yes, please. It's a dangerous assertion, is it not? But unfortunately, that's the view most of us hold. In fact, there are ample cases where if, 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 a, if a partner hmm, begins to get a bit realized and starts opening his or her eyes, then the other one starts feeling threatened. Something is happening. I'm losing this person. He is no more the same one. Must you feel threatened? Must you? Don't we have a choice to at least experiment with fearlessness? Hmm? Vidant does not answer questions, rather it throws many of them back at you. It creates new questions. Huh? The only hope is that the questions we newly create must be deeper hmm? and should have more potential to lead to uh, self-inquiry. We live in symbols and metaphors. What do you mean by warm and cold? Please. <laughs> this is intriguing. How do you know that somebody's behavior is warm? What do you mean by warm? And how do you know somebody is cold? What is cold? Cold is interpreted as, as distant. As distant. Physical distance? Emotional, physical. Emotional is physical. So, physical distance is coldness. Do we know what is best for us? If warmth is best for us, then warmth is a good word. But what is good or what is bad must be decided by whether it helps us or not. Is that not common sense? No? Be it love or be it porridge, whatever. How do you call it good or bad? It depends on the effect it has on you, right? Purely subjective, right? What if cold has a better effect on you than warmth? Then warm? Cold has a bad effect on others. Better effect on us, but bad effect on others. <laughs> How do you know that? I'm not coming up with answers. I'm asking you to probe. How do you really know whether it is actually having a bad? Just because something makes somebody uncomfortable, it does not mean that the effect is bad. What is the definition of good and bad? Huh? Something that pleases you is to be called as good. Is that the definition? Acharya ji, I, uh, I don't want to do choti mu badi baat, but uh, this is in continuation with uh, the puppy in the arm. You know, uh, uh, I thought if I am not mistaken, I thought you were relating it to a kind of a body relationship. But uh, if you look at it from the point of view of spirituality, is it not something higher than that? I mean, is it not a, a, an equation of consciousness, maybe a more evolved consciousness and a less evolved consciousness? It does not happen that way, you see. Because uh, when it comes to that puppy, irrespective of whether you are evolved or not, your mental status, even your age, we all love puppies. Even a six-month-old baby hmm, would find a puppy attractive. It's a totally physical thing. So it has. Uh, if you look at it from the Vedantic point of view, I would. I would probably. Uh, I, I, I. As I said, choti mu. I don't want to be do choti no, no, mu badi baat. But uh, would it not be? Uh, you know, relating consciousness with consciousness. No, it can be that way. It's just that it is not that way. Potentially, it can be that way, that when the puppy is in your arms, uh, you are seeing the entire existence in the puppy and all that is very much possible 
it is possible but it does not happen that way maybe in one in a million cases it is possible that when you hold the puppy it is an act of pure spiritual love but it does not happen that way the thing is you see that one in a million chance if we want to admit it too quickly and talk too much of it it becomes open and available to all kinds of uh, nonsense and per- perversions for example because we talked of body when the body we have had tantra and in tantra there is this thing and it's a peripheral thing it's not even at the core of tantra this thing about having sex in awareness right so they said fine uh, there is no point disparaging sex just let the bodies unite in awareness which potentially can happen but in the name of that potentiality there are a thousand shops now where men and women go to unite their bodies in awareness and it's nothing but a den of the usual kind of carnal pleasure with the added spiritual pride that we are indulging in something higher and when that spiritual pride is added then liberation becomes all the more difficult so when you admit that uh, possibility that yes it is possible that you hold the puppy and it's like holding god almighty in your hands yes theoretically it is possible but always add the disclaimer that it happens only in one in a million cases so that the the common man holding the puppy does not start harboring the illusions that he too is uh, you know some kind of uh, a prophet holding a lamb and uh, because the ego loves that the ego seriously loves that hmm? it happened once it's happening with me and i am at the same level as those fabled prophets they did it so i too can do this you know krishna was uh, with uh, dozens of maybe hundreds thousands of gopis and if he could frolic with so many of them i too can have 100 girlfriends and such arguments come rushing to me every day so i know the danger in admitting that body to body relationship too can be very pious and very spiritual potentially it can be for someone it can be are you that someone it has to be honestly answered are you that someone yes it is possible to krishn is it possible to you then why are you misusing the name of one person just to fulfill your old kind of wretched desires huh?